Hey, it's Mike Hambright with FlipNerd.com. Welcome back for another exciting VIP interview where I interview some of the most successful real estate investing experts and entrepreneurs in the industry to help you learn and grow. Today, I'm joined by Dmitry Fomachenko, who's a real estate investor, a broker, a mentor, an educator that realized over time that many real estate investors are successful, but we're caught in kind of the hamster wheel of transaction to transaction and not strategically investing inside of their retirement accounts to truly build wealth for the long haul. So today we're going to discuss uh, something that's very different. It's, a so, it's called a solo 401k, and it's uh, different than a self-directed IRA. If you're following the show, we've talked about self-directed IRAs a number of times. This is a unique vehicle called a solo 401k, and it's an interesting vehicle to help you shelter your income from taxes and allow you to build wealth. But before we get started with Dimitri, let's take a moment to recognize our featured sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days. Rates start as low as 9%. We'd also like to thank National Real Estate Insurance Group, the nation's leading provider of insurance to the residential real estate investor market. From individual properties to large-scale investors, National Real Estate Insurance Group is ready to serve you. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of FlipNerd.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Hey, Dimitri. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here. So... Uh, as many of our guests are on, they came. You came recommended from uh, Sensei Gilliland, who highly recommended that we talk to you. And I'm excited that you're here today. Yes, we uh, did a number of things together. Uh, he invited me to speak at uh, his uh, club meetings, and we did some webinars. So uh, yes, he, he's a good friend. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, as a real estate investor, it's what I've personally what I feel over the last few years. As uh, I just turned 40. I don't want to work as hard as I have in the past or want to be smarter about it. I have a, uh, my wife and I are about to have our 10 year anniversary. We have a son that just turned seven and all these things are colliding to help me think much more than ever so about ever so before about building wealth and sheltering it from taxes, of course, legally, you know, uh, ways to kind of build wealth. And there's so many people out there like you that have great knowledge that a lot of folks that are focused on just building their business and not thinking about wealth building maybe miss out on if, if they're not talking to you. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, we, we, are, we have a lot in common. I'm also 40. Uh, we've been a couple married, young guys here. A couple young yeah, guys. Yeah, a little bit older than you are. I have an eight-year-old daughter. And uh, definitely, just over the years, we're looking at our experience to see how we can uh, uh, basically expand onto that. But... The way I got started in real estate, I was just invited by um, a friend of mine from college to attend one of these meetings, uh, real estate investment uh, meetings, and that was a life-changing experience for me. About three hours of education on real estate, and that evening I made a decision, you know what, I'm going to buy my, uh, uh, I'm going to own real estate. I'm never going to be a tenant, I'm going to be owning my uh, property. It took me two years to accomplish that. Yeah. And then... Uh, after I did my first one, it took me uh, almost another two years to buy the second one. But it was a uh, basically a life-changing experience, and that's what enabled me to continue on uh, to invest more. And uh, uh, that's how, how I got started in real estate. Yeah, yeah. And, and I gather along the lines, you, you, uh, somewhere along the line, you realized that, hey, a lot of people don't know about some of these vehicles that are out there to help shelter themselves from taxes and truly build wealth and there's some really unusual uh i say unusual uh, little known unfortunately um uh, ways to especially for real estate investors and, and really all small business owners to use some retirement vehicles to really help build long-term wealth and kind of help you get out of that rat race eventually right Exactly. And, and see, you know, for, for me, all this is, uh, it was new because I'm actually, uh, I'm not from uh, where you are. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually, as you can see from my accent and as you can hear, I'm from Southern California. Uh, just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually immigrated uh, uh, here in the US back from Russia in 1996. Okay. So I had to learn how to speak English. 
I had to basically learn, uh, uh, get my kind of education back. And by education, I'm uh, electromechanical engineering. I have my uh, bachelor's degree. And I started working in that field, but then I got laid off and I started looking for other opportunities. And that's uh, about around the year 2000. That's when I got involved in real estate investing and also in uh, financial planning. Okay. So I start, uh, purchased my first couple of properties and then I started working with uh, a local real estate investment company as a mentor and educator after I uh, gotten several properties under my belt and basically helping other uh, folks uh, invest in properties. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, was, as I was talking to my uh, clients, I was realizing that uh, many of them had some things in common. And they were sharing with me that they actually had their real estate portfolios growing and successful, but their retirement accounts were not doing well. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a pattern. I, I could hear that. And I knew it was possible to use a retirement account to invest in real estate. So I basically started pulling all the information that I could possibly get my hands on and educating myself. And... Um, I was able to, because of my past uh, experience in financial planning, I was able to gather all the information and combine with my real estate investment experience. I started helping just a few folks, uh, basically as a department within a company, to uh, use retirement accounts. And then there was an opportunity for me to just kind of branch out on my own. And I started Sense Financial. And all I do right now is I help people use the retirement accounts that been sitting maybe somewhere at the, at the Schwab or, or Fidelity or Wells Fargo, uh, retirement accounts that last value over time or maybe stayed flat or, or been on the roller coaster and uh, didn't go anywhere over the years. Yeah. So, and th there are certain things that uh, you can do or you can have a lot more control. And I'm sure you will agree with me that the stock market, you and I, we have no control over what's going to happen tomorrow. A week from now, a year from now, Absolutely. you know, we can we can employ certain strategies such as dollar cost averaging, and you know, try to play the market and hope it's going to work out well for us. But ultimately, we have no control over what's going to happen tomorrow with the with the market. Yeah, and I think but, people I think people feel that more than ever right now. I, I uh, I'm probably biased because I am a real estate investor and I have that vehicle, um, but. It's funny, I, my undergrad is in finance, uh, specifically in investments, and I worked for a very large bank uh, when I got out of college, uh, helping basically manage multi-billion dollar pension funds. And, um, you know, then it, it just, there was something uh, cool about working in investments. But over time, you kind of realize, or I guess I've realized over the over that period of time, over since the time I, you know, had that that role or got out of college, that it just feels an awful lot like a lot of financial engineering going on. Things that you can't control. There's no, no such thing as a blue chip stock anymore. And at least with real estate, even though I almost never want to drive past my rental properties, for example, because I, I truly want to be passive and I have somebody else managing them, I can. I know, I know what it is. I could go over there in a matter of an hour if I needed to. And just to know that you're investing in something that you know and you understand and uh, is a physical asset. It just, it just makes a big difference for, I think, a lot of folks. And I think a lot of people are realizing that. Yeah, and that, that's the key. You know, you said that exactly right. You want to invest in things that you know and understand. And that doesn't have to be real estate, by the way. Right. You know, there are other investments. Real estate happened to be one of the most common uh, investment vehicles that most of our clients utilize. But it doesn't have to be real estate. You can, you can be completely passive. Right. You know, you can invest, you can be a lender, you can actually use your 401k as a bank and you can lend uh, money out to other people uh, who buy in real estate, who invest in real estate. And you can, you can make really nice returns. You can invest in, in physical metals, right. you know, in, in gold and, and silver and things like that. You can invest in businesses, you know, so it just gives you a lot more yeah. uh, opportunity and, and ability to invest in something that you have more control. Okay. You know, when you buy a when you buy a piece of real estate, you have the control. What are you going to buy that in what market? You have the control. Who's going to manage that? You have the control. What kind of tenants going to live in there? You have the control. What kind of improvements you're going to do on the property, which will result 
in, in the value, increased value in the property, increased uh, income and things like that. Yeah. So uh, I know that you're, you're using a unique vehicle and I think even with self-directed self IRAs, which I believe are more common, a lot, there, there's still a very small subset of the population that even utilizes those or understands them. And so I'm guessing a, 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 for solo 401ks, it's even less. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what a solo one solo 401k is and maybe kind of compare it to how it's different or how it's not from uh, like a self-directed IRA? Uh, sure, yes. So the solo 401k, just like a 401k that most people are familiar with, uh, most people when they work for a company, the company offers a company-sponsored plan of 401k. Sometimes it's 403b if they work for some kind of government agency. Uh, but uh, 401k at the company is uh, set up and sponsored by the company and offered to the employees. A, a solo 401k, just like the name implies, solo is designed for those people who are self-employed or they have a small business without full-time employees. And obviously I come in contact with many people like that. Many real estate investors are like this, you know, right. people uh, start a real estate investment business and they flip properties, they set up a corporation and they are pretty much one man show or maybe husband and wife running it. They have some subcontractors, but they don't have any employees and uh, uh, they perfectly qualify to set up something like this. And what they can do is uh, um, uh, use their, and that can be the self-employment or business can be in any capacity. It can be uh, just a sole proprietor. Somebody, uh, to give you an example, a nurse who's working uh, uh, for a hospital and she's W2 employee, but she also does some additional work. She works for a few other hospitals and they pay her with the 1099. So she's not an employee there okay. and she actually receives 1099 income and that makes her independent contractor. Okay. She's a sole proprietor. She doesn't ha have any company set up. It's just her name. So she qualifies for uh, establishing a solo 401k. Okay. Now, also a partnership, an LLC, a corporation. So pretty much any type of business will qualify. And, That's the qualification. Did I hear you write that, uh, so you, it can't be a company that has other employees. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so basically a solo 401k setup for businesses that have no full-time employees. And, and let me define that for you. And actually not me. Let me tell you what the, how IRS defines <laughs> right. that. So the, the full-time employee in, in the eyes of IRS is somebody who works more than 1,000 hours uh, a year. And that comes down to about 20 hours a week. Okay. So you can have a corporation or, or any other business and you can have part-time secretary or somebody else of working less than 20 hours a week and then you can legally exclude that person from the plan because the way the plan is written it, it cannot have other employees in there okay so that's why that's where the the name solo comes from i see and so that, that those are two uh, requirements you have to have a legitimate uh, self-employment activity and you cannot have any full-time employees so those are the qualifications okay okay so uh, talk a little bit about, uh, aside from that, in terms of the tax benefits, which I know that you're going to have a lot to share on that, but do those, how do those differ from a self-directed account, self-directed IRA? Well, you know, I think the major difference between a self-directed IRA and a solo 401k, and, and that's, by the way, I started my company by doing self-directed IRAs. So mm -hmm. we, that's all we did. But then uh, later on, I personally learned about solo 401k myself. I was amazed of all the benefits that it offers. And we, uh, after preparing the basis, we actually were able to roll that out and now offer that to our clients. And our business shifted probably uh, within uh, six months. We've gone from having 100% of doing IRAs to uh, right now we're doing probably 99% of our business solo 401ks. Wow, okay. So this year we only got a couple of clients who did IRAs because they just were not qualified for a solo 401k, but because they're just so much better. So to answer your question, yeah. the difference, the main difference between an IRA is that IRA is uh, required to be held with a custodian. The IRS says that once you set up an individual retirement account, it has to be held with a third-party custodian. 
And a custodian can be, there are some big names like Entrust, Equity Trust, uh, and, and few others that are um, actually a custodian. They hold on to your money and you have control over that, but you have to go through this uh, middleman and you have to tell them where they want your money to be invested. And uh, uh, th that's how you uh, control it. So every time you trying to make an investment or you need to simply pay the expense, uh, you have to submit certain paperwork and, and submit it to, to the custodian. They take a few days to process that and then the um, uh, expense is paid or transaction is executed. So there is a certain process you need to go to. Okay. Now, a solo 401k on the other hand does not require a custodian. So that's one of the major differences and one of the major benefits that solo 401k offers is that it does not require a custodian. So it's set up as a trust. Solo 401k is set up as a trust with you, the client, being a trustee. And as a trustee, you can go to a bank, open up a checking account in the name of your Solo 401k. Your Solo 401k will have its own tax ID number. Okay, so we will apply with the uh, IRS for uh, uh, EIN. Uh, you open up an account at the, uh, any bank of your choice in the name of your Solo 401k. Then you fund it. And there is two ways you can fund it by making a contribution to it. And we'll talk about that. That's another major uh, benefit sure. and difference. Uh, or by transferring existing retirement account into that. And uh, pretty much any type of retirement account can be transferred into a solo 401k with one exception. There is one exception. It's a Roth IRA. Okay. So unfortunately, if you have a Roth IRA uh, and it's after tax uh, money after tax contributions, IRS says that you, you can, you're not allowed to transfer that into solo 401k. But any other accounts, um, an I, traditional IRA, SEP IRA, simple IRA, if you have employer-sponsored plans such as 401k, 457, those can also be transferred as long as they're with the previous employer. Okay. And, and is, is there a Roth version of the solo 401k? Th there is a Roth version, yes. We, we'll talk about that yeah, later. Okay, great. Or I, I, I'd like to cover that because it's, uh, it's a major advantage. So again, uh, th that's how it is set up and th that's how it is funded. Okay. Now, so talk a little bit about uh, contribution levels, how those compare, which I think is probably one of the other main differences. Yeah, that, that's actually a good point. The, the contributions, unlike with an IRA, if you have a traditional IRA, the contribution uh, level to that is uh, $5,500 with additional $1,000 over catch-up contributions if you're over 50. Now, with solo 401k, your contribution limit is up to $52,000 for single participant. And if you're over 60, I'm sorry, if you're over 50, then you've got additional $5,500 in catch-up contribution, making the total limit $57,500. Wow. So if you're a husband and wife business and you, your business is successful and you're making money, potentially you can shelter over $100,000, up to $113,000 in your income from taxes, you can lower your taxable income by sheltering those funds into a retirement account. Wow. So that, that's, that's a great tax sheltering vehicle. I actually worked with several um, uh, accounting firms that use us as a resort, as a resource to help their clients uh, with uh, tax planning, with uh, lowering their tax liability. Yeah. Are there any restrictions on... Uh... Like if let's say let's say that your company only made fifty two thousand, can you contribute a hundred a hundred percent of that into this account or? Oh uh, yeah, so now now we get in, in a little bit more details, and I know this might be confusing to to some of the uh, listeners, but let me just cover that. And if you guys, uh, if anybody has questions, we we have all this information on our website. Sure, but sure, okay. so uh, basically, um, first. Uh, seventeen thousand five hundred dollars can be up to hundred percent of your contributions. Uh, there is a two components when you contribute to solo 401k, and that's why the limit is so high because uh, the first component you put the hat as an employee. Because if you're own your own business or self-employed, you wear in two hats. You wear in the hat of an employee, and you wear in the hat of a business owner. So as an employee, you can put first seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. And that can be up to 100% of your business. So if you're running a part-time business 
and you have a full-time job elsewhere, and you only made $20,000 in a year, most of that can be put into 401k. Okay. Now, on top of that, depending on your business structure, it's 20 to 25% of your net earnings. Okay. So th there is a percentage, there is a I formula that you, that you use. And we actually have a calculator. You can just pl uh, plug in your numbers sure. uh, for the year and it will tell you what the, the maximal ad contribution okay. is. Okay, okay. And then uh, comparatively uh, uh, with uh, a self-directed account, you're capped at 5,500 per year, is that right? Uh, with self-directed IRA, it's uh, uh, 5500 per year yeah. with additional catch-up uh, of $1,000. Okay. And uh, with, uh, sub with solo 401k, the, the limit is $52,000 with additional $5,500 in catch-up. Okay, okay. Now talk a little bit about um, the ease of using that for, and maybe how that differs from a, a self-directed IRA, IRA in terms ease of using it in terms of investing. Can, can you can you are there any differences where you can purchase your own properties or you can only lend to uh, other people other than yourself or uh, direct family members or are there any sure. restrictions or how does that you differ know, from a self-directed IRA? Yeah, uh, basically. Uh, the, the solo 401k itself, you can open one up if you go to, you know, a uh, major bank, for example, Wells Fargo. If you go to Wells Fargo, they'll probably open up a self-directed, I'm, I'm sorry, just a regular a solo 401k for you. But the problem is, just like with any other retirement account, is the custodian that places all the restrictions. Right. So whether you have an IRA or, or open up a solo 401k at uh, uh, Wells Fargo or Fidelity, they, as a custodian, they place certain language in your plan documents restricting you from making any other investments mm. besides those that they uh, offer to you. Right. That, that's their goal. That's why they offer those retirement accounts because they, wanna in, they want you to invest in their investments. Right. Now, what we do is something quite different. We, we actually don't offer any investments. We just create the plan. And our plan documents does not have any restrictions on investment options besides those that are placed by the IRS. And so, you know, I'm just assuming that the, the, your, your listeners are educated uh, crowd and, and familiar with the uh, IRA uh, uh, restrictions with self-directed IRA. So basically, uh, the, the list of allowed investments does not exist. The IRS says that you can pretty much inv invest in anything that you want, except, so there is a few things that you're not allowed to invest in. Okay. And those are the restrictions. But uh, you can invest in, in real property. You can invest in commercial property. You can invest in, in uh, uh, tax liens and tax deeds. You can invest in, in uh, 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 trust deeds. You can actually be a bank. You can lend money to others, whether it's a, a long-term loan or, or, or a short-term uh, a loan that you uh, f fund in a flip mm -hmm. uh, to somebody, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, there is only, as long as you uh, don't uh, violate any prohibited transactions yeah. and don't do anything that IRS tells you you cannot do, anything other than that you can invest in. Okay, okay. And since there's no custodian involved, what, what is the typical burden on uh, an, own, an account owner to track their activities to ultimately that has to be reported out at some point? Uh, sure, uh, that, that's a good question. So some people are concerned, well, it, does that mean that now I'm going to have to you know, do all kinds of additional work because I don't have a custodian? Right. Well, the truth is no, you don't have to do any additional work because uh, let's assume that you're using your retirement account and you're investing in property because most familiar, most people probably familiar with that. So if you buy in a real property, let's assume that you're doing that just under your own name, not, a re not in a retirement account. Okay. Well, when you sign a purchase contract, you're going to keep that on file, right? You're not going to get rid of that. Right. When you, uh, when you, um, uh, when you receive a rental income, you're going to keep statements from your property management. If there is an expense that you need to pay, you're going to keep that uh, on file. Okay, so you, you'll do exactly the same record keeping as an administrator of your own plan. Okay. You're not going to have to do anything else. The only thing that you'll have to do is once your retirement account uh, value 
combined value of your plan exceeds $250,000. There is a two-page IRS form called 5500EZ that you will be required to file with the IRS once a year. Okay. That, that is a very simple form. Most people can do that. Uh, or you can use help of your uh, accountant to help you with that. And all there is is the, the value of your plan at the beginning of the year, the value of your plan at the end of the year, and then any contributions that you made. So it's that simple. Okay, wow. It's really simple. And you have to file that if your plan is over 250. A lot of people who start out, they're below 250. You don't have to do any filing at all. Sure, sure. And uh, I guess we could we could probably talk about this for a lot longer than the time we have today. But uh, t talk real fast about the benefits of the Roth version of this. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, Solo four hundred one k also uh, also comes with the Roth component. And what that is is basically it uh, the plan allows you to make contributions after tax, just like a Roth IRA. Right. Uh, and again, the limit on Roth IRA is uh, fifty five hundred. With solo 401k, the Roth component limit is $17,500. And if you're over 50, you've got additional $5,500, which makes a total of $23,000. Now, when you invest in uh, or contribute money into your Roth 401k, then all of the investment is done tax-free. Hmm. There is no, uh, obviously, you, pay, you already paid taxes on your contributions. You can invest tax free, and then when you take out the distributions, you're not going to have to pay any taxes on that. So, I mean, think about this. I, I, uh, let me just use my own example yes, uh, here. I actually uh, just uh, uh, purchased a, a property in my 401k uh, a year ago, uh, and uh, I made contributions into my RAT uh, account, and I um, had about $50,000 in there. And I used leverage, so I actually financed property uh, in Phoenix market. And by the way, Sensei uh, helped me uh, rehab that property. So um, that property, I paid one ten for it. It's it's already valued about one sixty, and uh, I'm forty as I told you. So we're the same age. I've got another twenty years to go. So my goal is to grow that fifty thousand dollars into half a million dollars over the next 20 years. And that's, you know, just, I looked at some numbers, conservatively, I can do that. Yeah. So think about this. Does it, does it make sense for you to pay taxes on the seed or pay taxes on the harvest? Okay, now, but if you just bear with me for a second yeah. here, this is not just the difference whether you're gonna pay taxes on $50,000 or half a million dollars later. Once I turn 60, and if I have a half a million dollars in my Roth 401k, I'm not just going to take half a million dollars out and not pay taxes on this. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half a million dollars and I'm going to invest that into some income producing asset for me. For example, I can buy a fourplex that will generate you know, $50,000 a year for me. So I can keep that asset. I can just take $50,000 out, out of my Roth 401k tax-free, for the rest of my life yeah. without touching a principal. So the, the result can be huge. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you said something a second ago I want to clarify. So you can actually, your the trust that owns your solo 401k can actually borrow. Uh, you could actually take out yes. a loan. Is that, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, you, you can take a loan. Just like with self-directed IRA, you can take a loan. Yeah. You can finance a property. That's actually uh, um, brings another benefit. Okay, comparing IRA with solo 401k, uh, if you have an IRA, you can finance uh, property in your, uh, I'm sorry, in your IRA. Okay. Let's say you're buying a property for $100,000, you're going to put $50,000 down and you finance $50,000. Uh, the loan must be non-recourse because IRS does not allow you to provide personal guarantee for right. the loan, so it has to be non-recourse. And non-recourse means that the lender who's giving you the loan does not have any recourse against you personally or against your IRA. So, um, but uh, the, the issue with the non-recourse loan inside of an IRA is that the portion of the income that comes from the finance portion of the property will be subject to UDFI, and that's 
unrelated debt finance income, and which is a type of UBIT, unrelated business income tax, and that's subject to about 35% taxation right. inside of your IRA. Now, here is the kicker. If you do that inside of a 401k, just like I did, I financed 60% of the purchase price. There is no UBIT tax wow. on leveraged real estate. So just a, another benefit of using 401k yeah. with leverage to buy investment real estate. Wow, wow. Well, uh, I know there's a lot more to it and we, we've covered as much as we can in about a half hour. So uh, for, if folks want to learn more about this vehicle, and in all honesty, I do. So let's we'll set up some time to talk separately. But, and, um, you know, uh, j just wanted to mention yes. very quickly just a, one last benefit yes, yes, that please. I think is, is very important. Uh, the, the 401k comes with the loan feature, participant loan feature, which actually a lot, uh, gives you the ability to borrow personally from your 401k up to $50,000. Mm. So if you ever need some cash for whatever, maybe you, you have a transaction that otherwise will be prohibited. Uh, maybe with disqualified person, you can actually pull out up to $50,000 from your 401k, tax-free, penalty-free, before you retire, and use that for any reason. You just have to pay it back within five years. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty good. It's not available with an IRA. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, if folks want to learn more about this vehicle or Sense Financial or, or interested in talking to you about uh, the pros and cons or even setting up accounts, how, where do they go? Uh, they can just go to our uh, website, which is sensefinancial.com. Okay. And sense spelled like common sense. So sensefinancial.com. Uh, there, or, or they can just call up our office directly, which is 949-228-9394. Okay. And we'll, we'll add the phone number and links down below the video as well, too, for folks that want to get a hold of you. But, uh, but that's great. I, 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 I'm excited for folks that are listening to this and hopefully... There's some people that got excited about the ability to sock some money away and build some long-term wealth. And uh, if you're interested, go check out sensefinancial.com. Great. Yeah, I get excited myself when I talk about this yeah. every time. Who doesn't get excited about about uh, of minimizing your tax bill? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So great, great. Well, Dimitri, hey, thanks so much for your time today. And I wish you the best. Um, and I look forward to talking to you again uh, very soon. Sure. It, it was a great uh, chatting with you and uh, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Okay. Have a great day, my friend. Are you a member of Flipner.com, the most robust real estate investing platform in existence, where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market. You can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard. If not, please visit Flipner.com and register for a free account. You can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to flipnerd.com.